So we're talking about complaints this morning, about how to complain. Uh, there is a list that's emerged about the companies about which most complaints are made. Mm, a new survey by the consumer website Which reveals big differences in customer satisfaction at well-known British brands. Airlines, telecoms and energy providers performed poorly. Yes, consumer journalist Helen Dudeney is uh, with us this morning. Very good morning to you. Morning. You, uh, so have you got anything you want to complain about um... right now? I don't think so. No? Give me, give me a couple of minutes. And okay, your something. experience at the BBC so far, <laughs> any complaints? Mm, no, I don't think so. Were you to complain? What, what's, uh, you know, people have been messaging us quite a bit about, you know, how do you go about complaining? Are you, are you, uh, what's best by way of your complaining methodology? I would say always in writing, because particularly when you're talking about the telecoms and the energy industries, um, they are renowned for fobbing you off and going around in circles. So if you've got your complaint in writing, you can like use an email that trail right. or yeah. A, yes. Yeah. But often with those, I mean, with, say, say for the airline industry, it's at that moment in time that you need a resolution. So often it's about complaining face to face. What's the best way to complain in that in that sense? When you have to do it face to face, it's it's really hard, but keeping it as calm as you can and polite and making sure you still got all the facts, but usually you still can complain afterwards because if it's a delay you can still complain afterwards to get your compensation for that for that flight delay so it is about being objective and being polite and keeping calm because otherwise you're going to lose lose your facts and, and your case, really. If you're in a sort of a situation, so I, I think on a, a lower level, you think about restaurants, maybe, you know, something you're not happy about in the restaurant. What, what, what sort of, how do you go about that? Because I think quite a British thing is to sort of put up with something and maybe at the end of the meal have a gr bit of a grump about it. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't like that very much, but it's sort of over. But at the same time, sometimes you're reluctant to make a fuss there's a line between those two things, isn't there? Yeah, I think when it comes to restaurants, that's one of the places where you will have to complain at the time. Um, <clears throat> and certainly one of the things you have to do if you're in a restaurant is not eat the whole meal and then complain about it. And, you know, you're going to need to, if, if there's something wrong with that food, you need to leave it. But certainly ask for the manager. Um, and under the Consumer Rights Act 2015, you're entitled to services to be carried out with reasonable skill and care. So if your meal hasn't been carried out like that, you are entitled to redress. When we look at this list of companies um, that say have done badly or well, what is the onus on companies in terms of how to deal with the complaint well? Well, some do it better than others, as you can sort of see from the, from the survey. So um, we would like to see certainly um, companies doing a lot better in customer service and dealing with complaints. Um, and certainly it's of no surprise to see the telecoms and the energy and, and airlines right at the bottom there. What about the principle of, of just saying, I'm not going to leave this place until you make this better? What have about you done, the, have you the, done the, that, Charlie? Well, just that kind of dogged <laughs> attitude, which is not making, not angry, that. as you say, not shouting, but just saying, Do you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay here until you sort this out. Because that in itself presents a problem for people. They don't want people, you know, in the room, in the shop, who, who are complaining, do they? Does that work? Um, I think it works for some people and it doesn't for others and it depends like how, it's, how it's going like on what? in that store. When does it work? Um, I think... I, I have to say I don't know of anybody with, that, that, where it has definitely worked. I think people will say it has, but actually they've got really irate and occasionally somebody will, will do something to, just to get rid of that person. But actually it's not the most effective way because if you deal with it calmly, politely, go back to it later, you're far like, more likely to get a better result. Can I ask this? A couple of people said, uh, write to the chief executive officer, write to the CEO. Do they really open? You know, if you write a letter saying, I've, you know, I bought a TV somewhere and it's not very good, I'm writing this letter to you personally, they don't open. They don't see that, well, do they? Well, some actually do and some don't. There's a, there's a site, ceoemail.com, where you can get the contact details for CEOs. And, and he gets sort of 10,000 hits a day on his site, so certainly they're getting the emails. Some will actually deal with it personally. Octopus Energy will... will um, the CEO will respond personally but certainly what happens is it gets escalated so certainly all the big companies will have an escalations department so you will get an email back saying Mr or Mrs X or, or, or whoever will has passed your your complaint to me so it tends to get escalated and it can get dealt with quicker and more efficiently because it's been escalated. There's a tip. Mm.
Didn't know that existed. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much.